Okay, so Trick has said maybe we'll see eye to eye if I'm admitting things are real, that there is real stuff out there besides what we see. Uh, I have always said that there is the real world. I, I'm a materialist, I've said that. Uh, you know, Gary's been calling me a phantasmagorical for a long time, but at the same time, the cashify and math fails and, you know, thou art that as a side of things has, has been claiming I'm too materialist. Yeah, I'm a materialist. I'm just objecting to the idea that the universe is full of things with inherent qualities. That, no, it's not things out there that's real. They're, I call them phenomena, right? And we've looked really close and they don't look like things. It looks like what, what we call things always break down into trillions and trillions of little tiny things ultimately into little elementary particles. And the closest thing there is to a traditional thing are these elementary particles, which are surreal as fuck, and are actually waves and energy. So the world could be considered full of things if you want to think of things as waves. I think that'll fail too. I don't think, you know, I mean, light is not a wave. I don't think it's wave-like. It has properties so that it shares a mathematics with waves. But it's also weird. The, the medium it, it, it's in is weird and defies uh, this metaphor of waves. But I do think we get a lot further with that. I'm sure of it. But, uh, yeah, the only thing that would make you think I don't believe in reality is that you think the only way there could be reality is, is, is with things that have thinginess. And, and this is the fundamental thing. It's like Trick said, well, a wave has waviness. Oh, one philosopher has a good example of this. It's like um, sleeping medicine. It has sleepiness in it. Sleepy causingness. But it doesn't cause everybody to sleep like a, a mouse might not be affected by something that causes a human to sleep and so, so forth. But by golly, it's got that s human sleepy causing this in it. It's just desperate. It's like, it's like, oh no, the planets do move on circles if you put circles in circles. Same thing, they're still circles. Good idea, huh? I mean, oh. it looks like the universe breaks down into these really complex systems and that uh, what we call a thing is just a cross-section of a wave. Uh, it's the ability to name a slow-moving wave and and, and capture a little pseudo consistency over time in a changing dynamic universe. See, I just focus on materialism having to do with material facts, you know, facts that matter, that have consequence. Because, you know, it's this whole issue of what if life is a dream? Yeah, what if? So what? It doesn't matter if you're empirical and experientialist, you know. The, the force of gravity is the same whether we're in a dream or not. I mean, people, are we in a dream? Well, if we are, it's a different kind of dream than a nighttime dream. You know, that's what the word means, the nighttime dream. So you're just trying to apply a metaphor. So maybe waking life is just like a dream, these, these guys say. Yeah, maybe it is. Great, except for in this one, if you break your foot, it stays broken. So you got to be a little more careful in this one. So, yeah, it's just like a nighttime dream, except for a few things like that. It doesn't matter in my system because a material fact is a material fact, right? And you know, I, I just feel you guys don't aren't understanding the, the reductio. You know, when you reduce something to a contradiction or absurdity, you know, this is you start off with principles you're not sure of. Use logic to get you know conclusions you're sure are bogus, and. So you reject the principles. This is a way you study principles, see where they lead. You have to have a way to double check the conclusions and to double check. You know, logic is very useful. I studied logic in school. I have a degree where, you know, I took every logic course there was, I don't know, a dozen. I was trying to figure out how many it would have been over the years. I love logic and I make a living on it. I'm not trying to trash logic, obviously, 
trying to help you understand it better. And you'll use it better when you understand it. Because see, making these approximations and simplifications that we make so that we can apply the logic is very fruitful. But you have to have a way to, to double check the answers. You have to know how far the answers can go. The more you know about how logic works, the more likely you are to understand you know, the kinds of limits it faces, you think? So, yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of, yes, there's reality. I, I absolutely, I'm a materialist. I believe primarily in, in physics. I don't, other sciences are even, I, I hesitate to call them sciences at times. You know, I'm very material, tangible oriented. Yeah. Right, and that has made me look at physics really closely and noticed, um, yeah, you know, your that whole GPS thing is working through relativity, and yeah, there's you know, stuff is relative, even velocity. I mean, it's like it doesn't have to be confusing and counterintuitive. We're just assuming that we have to. I'm confused. If there's no God, what? I don't know. Have a purpose. You know, tough luck. You'll get over it. You'll get over the fact that there aren't things with inherent properties. Instead, there's just fields of energy. That the simplest particles are really still just relationships of a field with itself over time. And everything else is relationships between those relationships and so on and so forth. Just quadrillions of relationships. And the only reason things seem solid is because of a kind of triangulation. And yeah, I believe there's something real. But it, it's also really bizarre. It's very bizarre that time is relative. It's bizarre that velocity is relative. It's bizarre that something behaving like a thing can seem to defy that concreteness that, that the thing metaphor is supposed to uh, supply. For example, in the two-slit experiment, these are strange things down there on this level of, of what we found everything is made of. And we need to call them phenomena right now. But if we want to talk about whether it's things and properties, we know it's energy. It's pure system. It's pure system. Start visualizing how something, something can actually be pure system. Just relationships of relationships of relationships right down to the relationship of something with itself over time. Cheers.